Good morning to you. Mark Sutter of HurricaneTrack.com. Going to do a quick update for you this morning. It is Wednesday, the 22nd of September, by the way. And this is the morning update here. Going to go over just a few things, followed by a more in-depth discussion as we look at what's going on across the tropics later this afternoon. So as we start out here on the homepage of the National Hurricane Center, we have Depressions, Peter and Rose, and this is the leftover energy from Odette way up here. And these three systems have really no consequence except to marine interests. It's this right here, this 90% area of further development, Invest Area 98L, that we are most concerned about right now. Not because of where it is or who it's bothering at the moment, but what it might do and who it might impact down the road. A lot of people watching this, a lot of talk about it, a lot of chatter on the different message boards and on social media. So I figure... We'll take a look at it twice today as we watch and see how things evolve. So here's the five-day forecast track uh, development area, whatever you want to call it, as it moves through the tropical Atlantic, a favorable pattern setting up out this way. Different from what we saw with Peter and Rose, they were dealing with strong upper-level winds and other marginal atmospheric conditions. Water temperatures out in the tropical Atlantic are certainly warm enough. I'll show you that in a moment via the upper ocean heat content map. But in this case, with Peter and Rose and even Odette before that, the uh, atmosphere really wasn't cooperating. That is not going to be the case all throughout this area here that uh, this next system, 98L, will encounter going forward. I think we're going to see a hurricane out of this and at the very least pile up quite a considerable amount of what we call ace points and maybe just maybe some impacts here for the islands, either directly with you know potentially a landfall, some of the modeling showing that, or indirectly as it passes by. Or there's the opportunity that this comes in and is well east of everything and just turns on out into the open Atlantic. That is one possibility as well. That's what we're going to kind of look at here as we go through today and the next couple of days. And I think within... Uh, no more than three days out from now, within the next 72 hours, I believe we're going to know. Is this going to be one of those so-called fish storms where it's just op over the open ocean? Or is this something that we really have to watch here for interest in the Northeast Caribbean? So a few things to point out here is the depression. Uh, Peter, tropical depression Peter. Here's Rose over here. Still a very vigorous low-level circulation with both of these systems. But you can clearly see the strong upper-level wind pattern actually connecting all the way up here, not related to the remnants of Odette uh, directly, but strong upper-level winds coming out of the southwest for both of these systems. As the atmosphere is just not cooperating through this area, it is much more conducive to the south, and that is where we have Invest Area 98L well on its way, starting to develop some deep thunderstorms. Maybe not a well-defined low-level circulation just yet, but it's getting there, and this will continue to move off to the west and west-northwest over the next few days, and I think it'll start to really blossom in this area through here, and we will have Tropical Storm Sam uh, probably before the weekend is what I'm thinking so far. Look at this, very dry, fall-like air, and why not? Because it is fall. It's autumn now. Summer is officially over. It's done. Uh, this front's going to be pushing through and bringing much lower dew points and much more pleasant temperatures throughout a good deal of the lower 48, clearing into the Gulf of Mexico. And uh, that'll help to knock down the sea surface temperatures in this area. We'll talk about that more later this afternoon as we take a peek into the future as to what October might hold for this region as we start to shift. Once we're done with uh, what will be SAM, uh, then we really do need to focus on what might happen in October. I still think we have plenty of hurricane season left and uh, even some possible impacts, uh, but we'll talk about that later today. Right now, let's keep focusing on this, Invest Area 98L. Uh, definitely a vigorous, at least mid-level circulation, certainly developing some thunderstorms near whatever center might try to develop there. Some lightning throughout some of the westernmost bands earlier. Now there's lightning in this large area of thunderstorms, indicating a lot of instability. And uh, that's a sign that this is going to uh, really start to crank up where that low-level center gets defined. It looks like it's a little bit more to the south down here. Maybe it's trying to get together on the southern part of the overall envelope. 
that'll matter in terms of where this ends up down the road to some extent. Uh, but this is the morning visible satellite animation, courtesy of Weather Nerds. And this is on its way. We'll see what they say at the 2 p.m. outlook. Again, going back to the first graphic, 90% right now. Oh, you never know. By 2 p.m., they may bump it up to close to 100%. And by 5 o'clock today, who knows? We might have a depression if these trends here of organization continue. The main thing is do we have a well-defined, low-level circulation developing? Uh, and again, it looks like it's down on the southern part of the overall envelope of energy. That's something that the National Hurricane Center forecasters will determine, and we will see what happens later today. Uh, so what it has going for it, this system, and it's currently located out in this vicinity, marginal upper ocean heat content. Now, I say marginal. It's there, but it's at the lower end of the scale. Uh, but once this gets more to the west and encounters deeper, warmer upper ocean heat content values, or I should say higher values, uh, and, it's, and it's interesting because it's not necessarily that the, that the water is warmer, and in this case it is warmer, but it's the upper ocean heat content has more to do with how deep that warm water is. Because you could have 88 degrees at the surface, and it only goes down 10 or 20 feet, and that's easy to stir up. If below that, say 20 feet, uh, it's cooler, like in the mid-70s or something, Fahrenheit, uh, then it's very easy to stir that water up. Uh, but if that water column is 88 degrees and it still stays 85, 84, down to 80 degrees, and it takes hundreds of meters to get below that 80 degree mark, now you're talking about really high upper ocean heat content values. And that's what a lot of this represents through here is that the water is warm, but that water column of warmth is also very deep. So 98 is going to have plenty of that to work with as it moves through the region. And you can see too, this is what I'm talking about, the rest of the season ahead. Lots of energy still available in the western part of the basin, all around the Greater Antilles here, the Caribbean Sea, and surrounding the Florida Peninsula. Uh, plenty of energy to work with as we get into October. And again, we'll take a peek at that and what we might expect in today's update later this afternoon anyway. All right, so let's compare the models from the overnight hours, this is the GFS, and this is a little bit different perspective than you are used to seeing me show you. This is up at 500 millibars of the atmosphere, so it's about halfway up, we can say, roughly. Um, and so this is 18 to 20,000 feet, something like that. Uh, and it's a real good part of the atmosphere to kind of show you the steering patterns, at least in one level. There's a lot of different levels we could you know, talk about. The 850 level, which is down around 5,000 feet, there's 700 millibar steering, but the 500 millibar area is a good, happy medium here, uh, median, whatever, uh, average, if we, we just say that, that shows us the troughs, the ridges, and it's real easy to point that out. There's a trough right there. This is the one that's bringing the fall weather. Uh, slowly but surely to the east, there's a big ridge. Yeah, window's talking to me somewhere in the office. There's a big ridge out over the northwest Atlantic. There's some upper level troughing with a surface low with the leftovers of Odette. And then these little reflections down here, that would be Rose, that would be Peter. And then this little dent right here in the overall subtropical ridge, uh, what of, what, what's, uh, what of it there is down there, that is 98L. All right. And so this is the GFS. This is the Euro. They are both very similar in their initial analysis from 0Z last night, which is 8 p.m. Eastern Time. That's what that means, 0Z, zero, 0 UTC, or Universal Time Coordinate, Zulu Time, whatever you want to call it. So keep your eyes mainly in this particular situation on this right in here. This is 98L. And let's look at the GFS first of all. Let's run this out to about the five-day time frame. And you can see what happens over that time period. We go back. We run it out to five days, 120 hours out into time. And what do we have? Well, it moves from where I drew the circle on out into the open Atlantic there. And it looks like a fairly healthy hurricane in the modeling, no doubt about it. And what else do we see? Well, we see uh, there is some high pressure all throughout the deep tropics here, uh, keeping this moving on a general west-northwest path. 
shortwave energy, a little small trough coming across the northwest Atlantic, and then these low pressure areas up here. Uh, again, partially related to the activity that we've had recently with Peter, Rose, and Odette. And so, you know, five days out, this is about what we can expect. Uh, it's a pretty reasonable assumption that this will be several hundred miles east of the islands, generally moving off to the west-northwest or maybe northwest. So let's see what the euro shows, same time frame. Uh, again, this is 0Z last night, and you can see the trough and the ridges and pretty much everything lines up. There's no major discrepancies at all in the initialization of, of both of the models here. Uh, so let's move this out as well. This is 24-hour increments. That's the way the euro uh, on free sites like Tropical Tidbits makes their public information. It's a, uh, about every 24 hours. So there's 24, 48, 72, 96, and then 120. And so the position and the strength of what would be SAM are both parameters pretty much identical at the five-day time frame. Not much difference overall, but there are subtle differences at this point, and I'll point that out to you. So on the Euro, there is a little bit more ridging in here, and I'll just draw it in with white, than there is on the GFS. You can clearly see that even without me drawing in the annotation there, right? So there's a little bit more ridging, there's more air. It's thicker out here. The, the overall air mass on the Euro is thicker uh, to the north of 98, and so it's gonna be more on a west-northwest track, as you'll see here, towards the Lesser Antilles. So let's move it out another 24 hours, and you'll see what I'm talking about. More ridging there, and that's uh, six days, there's seven days. So let's do the same thing with the GFS. Let's move it out also to seven days. There's six, and then there is seven right there. Again, pretty big differences there. Less ridging, more troughing off the East Coast in the GFS than we have in the Euro. Very, very easy to see these big puzzle pieces in here. That's a huge puzzle piece right there. That's a big clue. And there's your tropical cyclone. Also a big clue, but that's smaller a feature to resolve than these larger features. But this is going to be out there. And what I mean by that, it's not like what is going to be SAM isn't going to develop. I'm almost certain we all should be at this point. But it is a smaller feature, uh, a little harder for the models to resolve and to deal with. But these much larger pieces, huge chunks of air, if you will, or troughs, which is you know less air in the atmosphere, it's lower pressure, uh, those are easier to resolve. But these differences are very important, as you see here at day seven, you know, because the GFS is just slightly more north, and the trajectory is such, it's moving northwest into that weakness. So if we're going out to day nine, or, or day eight, nine, and ten, and beyond, it curves well out into the open Atlantic there. That's the progression of how everything turns out uh, to be. This trough digs in, erodes the ridge away, and creates an escape route for what would be SAM into the open Atlantic, whereas the Euro simply does not do that. It develops more ridging, and in fact, it, it rebuilds it over the top of uh, what would be SAM, as you can see right in here, keeping it on a more west-northwest heading right across the northeast part of the Caribbean Sea. And that would bring some pretty big impacts here. This is day nine. We can go back. There's day eight knocking on the door. And eight days out from now, that's not too far to where you start saying, you know, it's just way out in time. It's never going to be like that. The models are getting good enough that even day eight, you have to start scratching your head and going, hmm, really should probably watching this, probably watch this closer than we normally would. Um, and it's really easy, again, to see that the ridging there, kind of holding this down, it can't gain as much latitude as what we see, for example, on the GFS at day eight. There's absolutely less ridging on the GFS, and so it's much farther north at day eight. So which one of these? Oh, look at that. Isn't that pretty? A little heart in the nation's heartland. <laughs> I just noticed that. 
Oh, too bad it's not Valentine's Day, but I digress. See, I get distracted. What do they say? Something shiny over there, whatever. Oh, look, squirrel. Well, in this case, there's a heart in the nation's heartland. Beautiful stuff, isn't it? Isn't the weather interesting? So we'll watch this, obviously. You know, duh, of course we're going to watch it. Eight, nine, day ten. And that's as far as a euro goes here on the operational. And yes, there are the ensembles, and there's the Canadian, and there's this model and that model. But these two global models, typically the best overall, the operational, very easy to show you these large puzzle pieces, and the differences between the two, run this all the way out to day 10 just to compare massive distance between the two and the overall steering flow of the atmosphere. So let's see what happens later in the day as the 12Z guidance becomes available. Um, I will take a look at this later this afternoon, um, probably 3.30, 4 o'clock Eastern time once the Euro 12Z comes out. And we'll compare these again, and I'll go over other information looking into October as well. Uh, and, you know, we'll just break it down and see what we learn then. All right? Thanks for tuning in early this morning. Good to kind of get in here and give you a first look at things, and we'll do it again later this afternoon. As always, thanks for tuning in to the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. I am Mark Suddeth. Have a great rest of your morning. We'll talk some more again later this afternoon.